If you were buying a digital camera in around 2001, you might have been tempted by the Sony Mavica MVC CD200. This is a very cool, very interesting camera from the dawn of the personal digital photography movement. Um, I have just formatted my first CD in this camera. Um, let's talk a little bit about it and what makes it so cool. Basically what we have here is the revised version of the Sony Mavica, which was a floppy disk camera. Back in the days before memory cards were not only standardized, but before they were even remotely affordable, a lot of camera companies were creating innovative solutions to make storing digital images a reality and to make it, you know, user-friendly. One of the most effective ways of doing that was storing them onto media that could be read by any computer. Of course, again, this is before the days of memory card readers and laptops and um, back when photos were relatively small in size because the digital sensors or CMOS sensors were very limited um, at the time. The development wasn't really there for, you know, two or three megapixel cameras. So what they had to do was retrofit digital cameras with, um, in, in, in the Mavica's case, floppy disk drives. But when images started increasing in size, 1.44 megabytes simply wasn't enough. So one thing Sony had done was they developed two things. They developed the memory stick, and they developed a CD version of the Mavica, and that's what we have here. It records on pocket-sized CDRWs, or CDRs, which were more affordable back in those days. Uh, each disc has a capacity of 210 megabytes. In 2001, 210 megabytes of capacity on a digital camera was incredible. Um, back in that time period, a 64 megabyte flash card or memory stick would have cost the average person about $50, and it had a very low capacity. So this was a very effective solution for anyone taking a large amount of pictures. And, um, and because these discs could be purchased anywhere, if you ran out on vacation and you needed more capacity, you could go to any drugstore and buy more CDs. Furthermore, if you had a special um, cutting tool, you could actually uh, it was actually more of a stamping tool, but you could cut out the center part of a 5-inch disc and use it in, the, in one of these cameras. They actually did make a stamp that would allow you to stamp out the center 3 inches of any CD. So these were really cool, but very expensive. This camera would have retailed for around $800 in 2001. But for $800, you got one hell of a camera. This thing shot 2.1 megapixel images, stored them on a CD, which um, had a stated capacity of 156 megabytes, uh, if you use the genuine Mavica CDs. Um, it could also be used, I believe, um, as a you could actually write files to this from your desktop PC. I, I'm pretty sure that was a possibility, too through a USB connection, of course, and you can actually burn CDs with it. Um, it had a built-in lithium, infolithium battery, which is when they first started using the infolithium brand. This just pops out like right here. Look at the size of this battery pack. Still holds a charge for quite some time. I haven't charged it yet. Um, I charged it initially overnight, and I've been playing with this camera for two days now, and it's still fully charged. It is the original battery pack. Um, this was a genuine Japanese-made camera, so it is high quality. It weighs a ton. Um, it is very heavy. And it has some pretty cool features. Um, one thing it lacks, unfortunately, is an optical zoom uh, lens built in. But because these lenses were designed to be adaptable to different filters and other, other uh, camera lenses, you could screw a zoom lens onto it. Um, it does have a rubberized grip here, which is kind of nice. Built-in microphone, of course, so it can do um, it can do uh, 
movie recordings, like short video clips, uh, which in those days was a very nice feature to have because, you know, uh, digital camcorders were quite expensive. It also has a shoe for a flash if you choose to do so. It looks like a um, just a mounting plate. I don't see like two contacts or anything. Um, so in order for this to trigger a flash, I believe you have to run a cable or the flash plugs into this um, accessory port. I, if I'm not mistaken, that's how that works. So that the flash can be synchronized. Or perhaps this is really for just a, a, a like a movie light where it produces an, an, an intense light uh, the entire time it's turned on. The... Um, the 2-inch LCD screen, which again, and, and that time period was almost unheard of, um, also features two little mount, or four little mounting tabs or recesses um, so that you could add a filter to it or a, um, I believe you could add a hood to this. So this was a fairly expandable camera. You could add a lens, a hood, a nice flash. I mean, this was really ballin' back in the day. So what we're going to do is upload these images and we're going to, now that we've finalized our disk, we should be able to upload them. Of course, if I had the three and a half inch to five, and a, to five inch, sorry, disk adapter, three inch to five inch disk adapter, that's what I mean to say, I could simply pop the disk into my slot load optical drive, but I don't have one of those anymore. I used to have one. I'm not sure why, but I did. I swear to God I did. This is just really awkward to plug in. There we go. Let's see if the, the old Mac can pick it up. I'm sure it can. It's reading. And we have USB mode normal on screen. That's part of it. What really amazes me is how there is no memory stick slot on this camera. you think there would be. I mean, it was an $800 camera. Oh, it's not showing up. Oh, there it is. I see it. I see it. All right, let's see what these look like. And I'll, uh, I'll add these to the video so you can see them. So let's uh, view as icons, good enough. Let's see what that mountain looks like. Oh my god. Oh my god. That is absolutely the most beautiful picture I have ever seen come out of any digital camera. Holy god. I am impressed. The color, depth, the the clarity. Oh wow. It is just amazing. These these photos are are that good. Oh my god. Just stunning. These photos are I cannot tell you guys how much these photos amaze me. I mean, they are so, and I'm and I'm I'm actually like I haven't seen any pictures come out of this camera yet. This is the first. Holy, God. The color, really, the color depth is what really gets me, or the, the accuracy, the clarity. It's just incredible. These photos are they're just that good. I'm sorry. They are they are better than any camera I've ever owned. Oh my god. I I got to say guys. For a camera that is now about 11 years old, it sure does shoot some amazing photos. Now, that's using all default settings. Let's see how that looks on my Canon camera. Now this is my main camera. This is a Canon A470 CyberShot, a PowerShot, sorry. 
This is the one I use for just about everything. Now let's take that exact same shot using this camera. Using all default settings, nothing special. Alright. Now, as a control, we're going to take a shot of the scooter. Just as we did in the Mavic, or with the Mavic, and we're going to compare these side by side. I Oh, I should mention I have this set to a fairly high resolution. I should bring it down. Um, let's see. Bring it down to, let's do two megapixels. Just, just to the control, make sure that we're at least being fair to the uh, to the cannon. Okay. And what the hell? We'll take a shot of the Mac Plus on my counter. Let's see how that looks. Now this does take good pictures. I I've I've um I've never really had an issue with the image quality on this camera. So what we'll do is we will drag these over. I'm gonna just copy some of these over to the local drive. Okay, now we're gonna go and connect the cannon. Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? Can you tell which camera? took which photo? I think the results are pretty obvious. This was taken with a modern day, well, 2008, $100 Canon power shot. It is a 7.1 megapixel camera. This photo was taken at a resolution of, I think I did four megapixels. This photo, was taken with a 11 year old Sony Mavica. Oh my god. Look at that. No color depth. Huh? Wow. Now, let's go ahead and do the same photo with this camera. This is my old trusty DSC P72. Let's see how this camera takes that same picture. Taken with a Mavica CD200. Cybershot DSC P72. And a Canon A470. So I guess the difference really is better quality CMOS sensors, better quality lenses, and just a better quality camera. The Sony beat out the Canon. Both Sonys did um, by quite a bit. I mean, this this image is so washed out. It's just bloody awful. I mean, it's washed out. It's not very clear. I can pretty much count the leaves on this image. So I guess my um, <clears throat> my verdict here. I was gonna throw this little uh, Mavica in my drawer of cameras and just let it rot. But I think I'm going to add this to my <laughs> to my fleet and actually use this thing. This is an incredible camera. Unfortunately, it lacks optical zoom, which is something I value very much. But look at that. The results speak for themselves. And you get to use pocket CDRWs. Ain't that a peach? What the hell? Oh, right, I had written stuff to this. You can see it. <laughs> I better stock up on these, man. Oh, my Lord. Who would have thought such an old camera? Manufacturing date is on here. It is from November of 2001. So, almost 2002. Dear God. Who would have thought...